I do think it's important to note about why it's in data science specifically. So if we look at how it is in industry at the moment, most things are done with dynamically typed languages. So Python, for example. Um, so why, why are they doing um, this in, uh, in dynamically typed languages? And I think for that perspective is if we go into a language like Java and we want to create a data type for just a general table, um, there's only so much that that can do for us. It tells us that it's a table for sure, but we don't know what columns the table has. We don't know what the types of the columns are, um, at least at compile time. And so there's only so much this can do for us and we still get the same runtime errors, which are exactly the same things that we get in dynamically typed languages. So we got all of the downsides of, um, of the type system there, the, the overhead. And, uh, and none of the upsides. Um, so the work I've done was on tables specifically, because tables are pretty ubiquitous in, in data science. So what is a table? Here's a very simple example of a table. We've got some number of rows, and we've got some number of named typed columns. And these heterogeneous columns can cause issues in, in the mainstream typing systems. So if you were to fix the number of columns, you could use something like generics with like a positional argument for each column. But this then falls apart if you want to then add columns, remove columns, perform all sorts of operations that might change what your columns look like. Um, then that makes it a bit awkward. Uh, we could go for a, a custom uh, table type system and we can get it to do exactly what we need it to. Uh, custom error messages to make debugging easier. But that's a lot of work and we end up with a load of custom typing rules. So it's easy for uh, an error to slip uh, through there. So the approach that we took was to use uh, dependent types. So we can build off the relatively small core of the dependent type system and then rely on the correctness of that to build up to the correctness of our table type system. Um, and actually further than that, I think it's useful more generally because dependent types allow us to encode custom constraints for our data science. Uh, so when writing code, you can do a lot of implicit assumptions, not just of your tables, but about other bits in the code base. And I think it's really helpful that we can encode that um, in, in our type system. Uh, so this work was based off a paper uh, called uh, the Brown Benchmark for Table Types. And in this paper, they described what they would want out of a typing system for tables. And so, they provided a, a definition of what a table is, example tables, and all the other things I've listed here. Um, they focus on dynamically typed languages to avoid um, making assumptions about what the type system should look like. Uh, we're taking this as inspiration rather than as a strict uh, formula to follow. And indeed, we've diverged from it in a couple of places uh, because of the compile time runtime split that we get uh, when we start using stronger typing systems. So as for specifically what we've done, uh, we've created a, a library in Idris 2. Um, and then as I mentioned before, we're relying on the correctness of Idris to prove the correctness of this library. Uh, we have implemented all of the example tables from B2T2, all of the example programs from B2T2, and all but one of the table API. Um, we've been focusing on the interface, not the performance. So, uh, Everything should still be the right order of magnitude, but a thing that future work could do would be to use the same interface, but then um, use an FFI into like C or something for a more efficient language. And then on to the demo. So actually let's make that a bit bigger. So hopefully that's a reasonable size for everyone. So first of all, let's just have a look at, at what a table looks like. This is the same table as before. Um, so the type of the table, you can see that the columns are included in the type here. So we've got column name, which is a string, age, which is a natural number, and favorite color, which is also a string. Uh, this is then how we would write it out in Idris. So um, it's just very familiar notation, hopefully for everyone here. 
we can refer to the columns by name or by index. Um, and these are all checked at compile time. Uh, if we ask for a column that doesn't exist, then we'll get an error message like this, which to be fair, might be a bit um, obscure to someone unfamiliar with dependent type languages. Uh, but what it's saying here is that we can't find a proof that the column grade is in this schema. And indeed, the reason we can't find that proof is because one doesn't exist. Um, I could also change this here. So instead of a string, if I ask for index four, then that will also fail. And for a very similar reason, because we can't prove that that index is, uh, is in the schema. So if we were using a custom type system, then we could um, provide more descriptive error messages here, which might be more helpful for uh, an industry programmer. Uh, or alternatively, we could use something like uh, Idris 1 had error reflection. That's not been added to Idris 2 yet. So that's uh, potentially something that could come in the future. Um, so what's really going on here is that column takes um, an object of this field type here. And so a field type is, um, is a proof that a column of this name and this type exists in the schema. And it's a constructive proof, so it, it tells you precisely which column that is. And then we overload um, the string and integer notation to get uh, these nice behaviors above. And so from the type signature here, you can see that we will only get out um, a list of the appropriate type. And this is all checked at compile time. Uh, so then for using uh, these things, so here's another example of a table. So we've got a column of names, they're strings, and then a bunch of quiz scores here, and they're all, all integers there. And suppose we want to take the dot product of, of these two columns. Well, we can do that, and that's absolutely fine. And we've got here some constraints on those fields. So the fields do have to be of the same types, and they've got to be a numeric type. And then the definition of the dot product is just standard functional programming uh, recursive um, solution there. And I think, it, it, yeah, it's all in the types here. So again, everything is at compile time. And uh, you know that all of your types work correctly. Um, we can also do type level computation. So this is, this is the big thing, in my opinion. Um, so if we want to add a new column to the table, uh, then we know the type of the old table. So we know the type of the new table, even though the type is actually a non-trivial computation of the previous one. In this case, very simple computation, of course, because we're just adding the extra column average on the end here. And so we can see that again in the type of build column that we are using a schema, but with an additional field tacked on the end. And so for more complicated examples like joins and things like that, we end up with more complicated computations, but it's the same uh, underlying principle there. Uh, and then moving on to what I was talking about uh, before of being able to encode uh, user-definable uh, constraints. So this quiz average uh, function, uh, it doesn't take any old schema. Uh, it only takes a schema in a specific form. And the definition of that is these two things here. But in particular, just colloquially, what it is is if the name of a column starts with quiz, then it's got to be of a particular type. And so we use this as a way of type safe iteration over the columns of the table. So we know that the quiz columns are going to be of the right type and we don't care about what the rest of the types are. So if we go back up to the table here, we can see that we've got this name, which is a string, which is not an integer, but we don't care about that because we only want the quiz columns to be integers. Um, and as this is all user definable, this means that if users have their own constraints, which may be slightly different for how they want to iterate over the columns of uh, a table, they can still do that, uh, which I think is great. Uh, how am I for time? 
yeah, a couple more minutes. Um, and uh, we can go even further with that, and we could just constrain like the whole table. So we want the schema to completely satisfy um, this one thing. And so in this example here, uh, we are doing something called p-hacking, which is a, a thing in statistics where if you do too many tests, then some of them will pass just by accident. So I've got a bunch of columns here, and I'm trying to find correlations between the first columns and all the rest of them. And so for this, I need all of the columns to be Boolean types. And so that's what this constraint here does. And that's absolutely fine. And then we can run that. And oh, look, we find a link between orange jelly beans and acne. Um, and just for fun, I printed a little graph of uh, all the p-values here. Um, but because of the type level computations, we don't have to do this statically. Uh, there's another table here called jelly named, and that's got an extra column. That's got the name column in there again, as we can see here, these are all the names. Um, and so that's not all Booleans. Uh, however, after we've dropped the name column, it is all Booleans, and the type system is clever enough that that just works. And uh, shall I stop there? I'll stop there.